wonderful people that uh, I had the honor of introducing. Burke is currently working. He's our uh, guest of honor liaison, so he's asked me to do the introduction for them. Uh, Ursula Vernon first is our uh, first guest of honor. She's the author of a number of other projects. Burke has been nominated uh, for an Eisner Award received for Junior Library Guild Premier Selection and Ursa Major Awards, as well as a number of Web Comic Choice Awards. I mentioned in the New York Times, she did not get tattooed through her forehead, despite her mother's insistence. <laughs> this weekend, she'll be sharing a lot of her knowledge, a variety of panels. Don't miss uh, Tales from the Road Sunday with uh, her, Kyle Gold, and Jeffrey Eddy of Soulful Wolf that'll be here in the uh, main stage. Second is uh, F.S. Murray. It's been a member of the Murray family since 2004. Actively going to the convention since 2007. Her artistic background started when she was young, always had an interest in uh, the Disney style artwork, mainly inspired by Lion King. She focuses on uh, commercial artwork for her business. She likes story driven, heartfelt, and uh, surreal artwork genres for her personal works. Besides art based panels, uh, join with us Friday night it's tonight for uh, the Scary Game Night. Watch her. Create Under Pressure for Cutthroat Artists, Saturday afternoon, and that's here at the main stage. Third, we have Sonny Dingo. Thank you very much. Sonny Dingo is a brightly colored doggo with a contagious smile, jaunty eyebrows, and a warm demeanor. He woke up somewhere in the United States in early 2015, a brand new dingo full of questions. What sort of dingo was he? What should he do with his life? So find out answers to those questions and more this evening at the Sunny Dingo Story Panel. Also, make sure to go up and chat with Sunny throughout the weekend. Thank you, Sunny. Thank you, Juan. Alright, so next up we have um, basically a few additional announcements. Um, pertaining to safety and generally fun at the con. Um, Charles? Charles. 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 Hello. Charles. Hello. Hi. My name is Charles. Hi. My name is Charles. Hi. I run cons. I run, I run cons. I have complete control. I can stop anytime I want to. I have a complete control. No. Charles, are you sure you're not a Dalek? <laughs> no, there are too many people alive for me to still be a Dalek. <laughs> <laughs> All right, here's the deal. This convention is about people, although the definition of people varies a little bit. Right? It's fuzzy. Uh -huh. Oh! <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Speaking of people who are going to remain safe, that's all of you, okay? We have an operations department here whose job is to help keep the con running efficiently and safely. We don't want anyone hurt accidentally. We don't want anyone hurt all weekend. <laughs> what? Don't judge. You're going to see people wandering around with radios and bright green vests. Those are our wandering hosts. They know stuff. They know things. They can help you find things. If you have a problem, whether you feel unsafe or just can't remember where the bathroom is, they're there for you. Okay, this is part of how we do customer service. We want you to be able to connect with the services you need to have a good time. You know, so you can enjoy yourself. Uh, you can ask them anything you need. Look for them in the stylish green dress with the white border. Uh, they also have oper operations room off by programming. Operations is where you can also look for lost and found or any other issues you might have. Uh, also, if you're looking for something lost and found, if they don't have it, check with the hotel's front desk down in the lobby. That can often be where it'll be found. And... Oh no, I can't tell you that. <laughs> <laughs> we don't have a picture of that, do we? Okay, good. Alright, okay. Operations is here to keep you safe. They're here to help you have fun. Enjoy each other. Don't hurt each other, okay? Okay. Okay. Please. We promise. And what is rule number one? Don't break the hotel. Don't break the hotel. <laughs> there will be a test on this in just a few moments. <laughs> Thank you, Charles. So. I wanted to. Uh, 
<laughs> you broke the hotel. <laughs> I didn't do it. I didn't do it. I actually wanted to mention uh, a little bit in regards to operations and the last couple of years. Um, I don't want to jinx this, knock on wood, but we've had no major events for, at this convention. You guys have made this a fun con without any major issues. Now, hopefully not, but um, it's part of the reason why we're called, uh, our, our folks are called wandering hosts instead of security. Security changed the mindset on what that is. A wandering host is here to help you. Security is here to enforce things. And we'd like to think that most of you guys are mostly adult. <laughs> mostly. To be able to actually have fun without breaking yourself, others, or the hotel. Um, so again, the last two years have been fantastic. Keep up the good work and thank you. Um, I just, I, thank you all. Um, next we have Hotel and Eric. And this man is fantastic. He's done so much for this hotel. Um, really um, thank you, Eric. And thank you, Kelly. Hey, everyone. My name's Eric. And, uh, Hi, Eric. Hey, cool. Hey, that's <laughs> good. Good stuff there. Recognition, right? Okay, another test. While you're at the Hyatt, what should you do? Break, Break, Break the hotel. The hotel. Oh, I'm so proud. <laughs> I know. Oh my God, I can get so much. All right. But uh, seriously, guys, I just wanted to thank you for all migrating up to Minnesota before our long, cold winter. So, I mean, thank you for that. Bring some warmth with you. Um, just so you know, um, there's been a lot of words, like 10 or 12 of them from Kelly saying how awesome I am. But uh, the, the real heroes that I want to acknowledge are our partners over at the Hyatt Regency Minneapolis because, you know, without them, we couldn't do any of this. Um, they love us. They are, um, in a non-creepy way, they're actually <laughs> monitoring all of us on social media right now. So, every single picture you post to this event, I guarantee they're watching, they're showing their colleagues, they are printing out posters of <laughs> what in fact, they had another event that was in here a few months ago, and this event had about 50 or so people in it. They wanted to know, could they take their group picture in the hotel lobby? <laughs> well, funny story, our hotel rep only had one picture showing a group in the lobby. <laughs> <laughs> First year parade from last year. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, these guys love us. Um, we love you guys. Um, things are going to get a little cramped this year at the Hyatt. We have a lot more uh, people coming in than last year, but you'll be surprised. We're working on amazing things. Yay. So that's all I got. Be awesome, you guys. Yeah, come to closing ceremonies. There's news. <laughs> hey. All right. So, I think next up we have Flip, and come here. The amount of work, oh, dude. Yeah. Aww. Yes. <laughs> so, oh. unlike me, who just likes to work these things hour after hour after hour and forget to do things like eat, sleep, the rest of you are here to have fun and not break the whole deal. Wow, I actually was prompting him to say that first, but hey, you guys already will train us. <laughs> now, we have some other people this year that also want to have fun. We are greatly expanding our room party system. Everybody here knows what a room party is? Woo! <laughs> Sounds like it. So, if you see the some signs, I'll send you to kind of the back corners of the hotel. We have an entire run of suites that have quite a few room parties back there. Go visit them, possibly go to their conventions. Or just enjoy a little bit of their time, because they're doing video games, homebrew, and other distractions. So, and then also in that is some mysterious little place called the Dragon Slayer. You might see the signs warning you in that direction. That's our con suite. Or at least they keep saying that it's our con suite. 
Um, we are trusting them that when they say they're here to serve for suitors, that they mean that. Hopefully. Yeah. If you're interested in the hours, look at your programming guide. They have the hours. They're fairly extensive this year. They're going to be able to feed you or be fed to. I'm a little confused on that right now. And then also, we have a new program this year. Who here has volunteered so far? Ow! Nice. That's good. I think we can get some more. Well, here's a little bonus for you. This is our first year where we have a volunteer con suite. This means that it's slightly better food for people who've put in some hours to keep this con running. This is a volunteer organization. A lot of effort has to be put in. So if you want to put in a little bit of time, go over to the volunteer's desk. They'll tell you what you need. And after a little bit of service, you too can actually be able to get sandwiches, yogurts, and slightly better stuff than what's in the con suite. And that's to say a huge thank you to all of you that are able to volunteer and make this con run. So I hope to see every one of you in there, right? No, yes, thank you. Please. <laughs> Speaking of that, I'd like you guys to take a look at the back of your badge. Um, there's a bunch of relevant information on here, like item number one, don't break the hotel. Uh, what happens is once you actually have donated enough uh, hours to the actual convention, you get a sticker to be put on the back here that allows you into volunteer con school. Um, and that kind of leads into my little uh, spiel about volunteers. Flip already somewhat touched on this, and quite honestly, I don't need a script for this because I've said this so many times. Volunteers are the lifeblood of any organization that is volunteer-based. Keep work there. Um, if everyone here kicked in an hour or two um, throughout this weekend, we wouldn't have to worry about badgers. We wouldn't have to worry about setup or teardown. We wouldn't have to worry about moving chairs, um, even though the hotel does help us with that. Um, we wouldn't have to worry about, I mean, there, there are so many small things that happen at a con, but when you put them all together, they become a very, very large portion of <coughs> what makes this convention work. You guys, the volunteers are the lifeblood. I mean, staff are very important, don't get me wrong, um, but it's like the heart, the brain, the kidney. Overall, you still need blood, and you are exactly that. If you can basically drop a couple hours this weekend, it would be very much appreciated. Okay. Um, so, speaking of community, um, I wanted to briefly touch on how we work with other organizations, um, because we don't sit in a vacuum here. Um, pretty much any Huracan has partnerships, usually of some form or another. Um, and that can be anything from borrowing other conventions assets, like radios that we do, or um, Basically, it, it, we help other conventions out, they help us out. Um, one of those organizations um, is uh, Anime Detour and Anime Twin Cities. Um, they help us out, we help them out at their convention. Same deal with Convergence. They provided a number of things here that help this convention run. But also, GPS. I, I mentioned this last year, I'm going to mention it again, because these folks we have to store our stuff somewhere. They actually provide storage space for us. Um, Geek Partnership Society is an organization that basically they provide support for the greater community. Not just furry, but sci-fi, anime, um, ska, and a few other things. Um, what I would suggest is, I mean, check them out at geekpartnership.com or, or Dot org. Okay, thank you. <laughs> um, and also check out uh, their auction. Um, it's on the far side over here. Um, they've got some really neat stuff there. Um, finally, in addition to partnerships, one thing that Furry prides itself on is our charitable nature. You guys know how much money that fur conventions actually donate to charities. 
It's a fair amount of money. Now, the first year we didn't give anything because we were kind of our own charity. We wanted to make sure that we well, survived the first year. We did. Second year we moved, so we didn't really donate anything for the first uh, until after the convention where we, were, uh, we made sure that we actually had some money to actually donate. We did donate to Whisper Rescue. Um, decided that we wanted to do more, so we actually, this year we have an official charity, and that charity is Whisker Rescue again. Um, they've been doing this for eight years, and Missy and Barb um, are running this. This is a family-owned organization. Um, can you folks come up here and tell us a little bit more about yourself? Missy and Mark, are you in the audience? Uh, come on down. I'll get them. <laughs> He'll go get them. <laughs> They're hard at work at their table. They're right here. They're right here. <laughs> Thank you. So, can you tell us a little bit about this? Sure, I'm Missy. Um, I'm probably the one that started the rescue. Um, I've been rescuing for 20 years, actually. Um, West Rescue has been the 501c3 nonprofit since 08. Um, we're a pretty small rescue, but we do a lot of work. Uh, we're pretty proud of our group. Um, this is my mom, Barb. She's a huge Hi, part of our organization. <coughs> and um, she does a lot of our running for us. Vet um, runs, you name it, she does it since she's home. Um, I work all day, most of us as volunteers do work all day. Um, and then do this on the side. So, as Kelly was saying, volunteers are extremely important for us as well, and uh, hard to find dedicated ones as well, so. They have a table set up outside here with a donation jar, but did you have anything else that you were doing um, up front here? Um, we have items that on the table for sale. All of it goes to our rescue group, 100% of it. Um, there's a donation bucket out there as well if you don't see it, if you want to buy. Um, we also are looking for great families to adopt our animals. We are a pet and kitten rescue. Um, we also are in need uh -huh. of foster homes. Uh, we're also in need of farms for cats who aren't, uh, who aren't adoptable. Um, we also could use, we also have another program called Working Cats Program where like if you have a business where you could use cats to keep out mice and stuff from your business, we also have that program uh, where these cats can help keep your, rod your rodents up under control. Um, and where you're just looking for homes and places for the cats to go permanently and get taken care of. So if you have any questions on that, let us know. We have, we have uh, forum stuff at our table as well. Thank you, too. happens over a weekend. But the thing is, most conventions, once you're done with the convention, there's really not much more that happens. Usually, there are, there are a few communities out there, but MM First is something that happens year-round. And I would suggest going and taking a look at mmfirst.org. Um, I know it's not org. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, we do a spring and a fall picnic every year for at least 10 years now. Um, we do bowling events. We do um, bi-weekly Perkins meets. <sighs> We've been doing that since 2003, I think. Yep. Somewhere around there. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so take a look at our parent organization and see what else is occurring in the community. In regards to the fall picnic, that's a week after next, I believe. Two weeks. Two weeks. More work. <laughs> um, but I need to bring um, uh, 
Uh, move on back up here for uh, programming. Um, go ahead, Steve. Thanks. Just up here. <laughs> so, uh, like I said, the programming division handles a lot of individual departments, and the team that I, I help work with, and the guys come with them, are awesome. We've got some amazing stuff here this weekend that you've already been enjoying since yesterday until Sunday, um, and I'm really excited about what we've got, uh, got going. Um, everything from this main stage department to the tactical, they put they put together a few absolutely awesome. Can we get around the applause for them? Um, as we go down the hallway on the right um, is the campaign room, and uh, we'll talk a little bit about the Iron Artist and the Iron Pen. We've had uh, some announcements going out about that since uh, a little bit, uh, let's see, last week on Monday when the, the secret ingredient came out. Uh, submissions for those are can be put in until tonight at 7 p.m. So if you guys are still putting in, uh, if you have something for the Iron Artist or Iron Pen competition, those can still go in until 7. Uh, they'll be voting on that throughout the weekend, and then uh, closing ceremonies is when we're going to be announcing all of that. So definitely uh, keep an keep ear out for that. Now that room after the Iron Artist and Iron Pen, they're still running the GMP, which is kind of a self uh, publication for more art and stories and, and things that we can produce and it's, it's really neat to see what uh, what our community can come up with and that's what's really cool about that room. Down from that we have the video gaming room. And the video gaming team has worked out an awesome collection this year of console games, arcade titles, as well as our own VR rig. And in there you see that HTC. Uh, so slots are limited for that. So go to the video gaming room you can sign up for uh, slots for part of the uh, VR rig. Uh, tabletop gaming. Uh, Silver Spoon is running up an awesome, awesome group over there. Uh, and they're happy to announce that we finally acquired a full library of Scottish game fair by furries and other games everywhere. So come on by, feel free to relax, challenge one another, let us know what you'd like to see in the future title. We already have Smash Up, Kitsune, both King of Tokyo and King of New York, The Oatmeal, Exploding Kitten, Settlers of Catan, Suro, and the ever popular, ever missing graphic, Cards Against Humanity. So not only that, we're also offering a small planned game session, uh, including Super Fight, uh, Lodavi TNT, Three Dragon Nancy, and several sessions of the premier prototype game, uh, Real Divine. So come on by, roll some dice, play some cards, let us know what stirs the gamer geek in your heart. So from there we have Nerf War, that's up in the fifth, state, uh, fifth floor room, so you gotta go up the elevators and the escalators out uh, up to that room for Nerf War. That's going to be running a um, little bit more today and then tomorrow as well. Now that room on Sunday, to so you're familiar with where that is, Sunday night, that's where our Dead Dog Dance is going to be. Been able to work it out. We've got some DJs that are going to be playing. Uh, so from 8 to 10 p.m., we're going to be doing a, a Dead Dog Dance up there. So definitely check that out on Sunday. So who here wants to go on their own quest for the shiny? For <laughs> What if I said that at the end of that quest was a reward of the tre treasure chest that has a membership for next year? Oh. Interesting. Okay. So here's the quest. Our party of adventurers missing some equipment. They need it. Scattered throughout the convention. After opening ceremonies, go to the freebie table. So where registration was when you exited Reg, that table right there. That's the freebie table. There's a scavenger hunt game sheet. And it's going to have the clues to where the items are hidden around the convention. The full rules are posted uh, outside by that freebie table uh, for, for the scavenger hunt. So uh, play safe, play smart, and good luck. We've got a wide selection of panels this weekend. Um, all of the schedule for that is online. We've had uh, some changes. It's all available online. Social media is going to be pushing that as well, uh, as well as the signage in front of the panel rooms. Those panel rooms at night become our movie rooms. So midnight, they switch over to our, uh, our movie rooms until 9 a.m. Come on by for a wide selection of movies, TV shows, and, uh, and the anime. Tonight at midnight, we got a little surprise for you. And it's from the category of, I can't believe they got the license to show that movie at a convention. <laughs> but thanks to our partnership with the Geek Partnership Society, we actually did get the license, and we're allowed to show this. I can't say what it is. 
I can say it's the perfect movie to be showing at a furry convention. You just have to show up tonight at midnight at the movie room to find out more. I've given you what I can. Come on by tonight and see. Um, just uh, come on by and, and try everything. We'll say that. Thanks, everyone. Again, thanks GPS for being able to get us those licenses. Um, there's a lot we can actually show simply because of the licensing that they have in place. Um, so, I guess the other thing that I wanted to mention is I wanted to take a second and thank the sponsors. Ow! <laughs> <laughs> Don't do that to me. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> it's a tight fit. Okay, um, sponsors. Um, Woo! Most of the sponsors should have gotten a little card that I we put in the actual sponsor bag. A uh, thank you. And I mean every word of that, which I typed in there. Um, which was basically, you guys, I mean, all of you provide support, but the sponsors provide a little bit more um, from the standpoint of, while you guys are getting swag, you're also helping fund this convention. Um, so, again, I want to thank all the sponsors. And be sure to attend the, the brunch, which is tomorrow. Um, and enjoy the swag that comes with it. Um, thank you. Yay. Woo! Yay. So, the last thing is, the guest of honor, we're going to do a meet and greet after uh, actually leading right into it, right after we're done with opening ceremonies, right? Uh, so stick around um, and get to know our guest of honor. Um, finally, get up there, have fun. Um, that's all I can really say. I mean, you guys, thank you. Thank you for coming. And I, I'm kind of looking forward to what Migration is going to be able to do in the future. Um, this convention is going to continue to grow, and thank you. Um, it's really enough. Yeah. Migration 2016 is now open. Yeah.